Konstantin von Tischendorf, Mobigat Friedrich Konstantin, von, Tischendorf, January 18, 1815, December 7, 1874, was a world-leading biblical scholar in his time. In 1844 he discovered the world's oldest and most complete Bible dating from 325, with the complete New Testament not discovered before. This Bible is called Codex Sinaiticus, after the St. Catherine's Monastery at Mount Sinai. Where Tischendorf discovered it. The codex can be seen either in the British Library in London, or as a digitalized version on the Internet. Textual disputes are resolved when the two oldest books, Codex Sinaiticus, Source Aleph, 4th AD, and Codex Vaticanus, Source Beta, 4th AD, agree with each other. Tischendorf was made an honorary doctor by Oxford University on March 16, 1865 and an honorary doctor by Cambridge University on March 9, 1865 following this find of the century. While a student gaining his academic degree in the 1840s, he earned international recognition when he deciphered the Codex Ephraim Rescriptus, a 5th-century Greek manuscript of the New Testament. The Codex Sinaiticus contains a 4th-century manuscript of New Testament texts. Two other Bibles of similar age exist, though they are less complete. Codex Vaticanus in the Vatican Library and Codex Alexandrinus, currently owned by the British Library. The Codex Sinaiticus is deemed by some to be the most authoritative a surviving New Testament manuscript, as no older document is as complete as the Codex. The content of the oldest Bible of the world, as it is more complete than Codex Alexandrinus or Codex Vaticanus, has been digitized. Throughout his life Tischendorf sought old biblical manuscripts, as he saw it as his task to give theology a Greek New Testament which was based on the oldest possible scriptures. He intended to be as close as possible to the original sources. Tischendorf's greatest discovery was in the monastery of St. Catherine on the Sinai Peninsula, which he visited in May 1844, and again in 1853 and 1859, as Russian envoy. In 1862 Tischendorf published the text of the Codex Sinaiticus for the 1000th anniversary of the Russian monarchy in both an illustrious four-volume facsimile edition and in a less costly text edition, to enable all scholars to have access to the Codex. Tischendorf pursued a constant course of editorial labors, mainly on the New Testament, until he was broken down by overwork in 1873. His motive, as explained in a publication on Tischendorf's letter by Professor Christfried Betrich, Leipzig University, Professor of Theology, was to prove scientifically that the words of the Bible were trustfully transmitted over centuries. Tischendorf was born in Langenfeld, Saxony, near Plauen, the son of a physician. Beginning in 1834, he spent his scholarly career at the University of Leipzig where he was mainly influenced by J.G.B. Weiner, and he began to take special interest in New Testament criticism. Weiner's influence gave him the desire to use the oldest manuscripts in order to compile the text of the New Testament as close to the original as possible. In 1838 he took the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, then became master at a school near Leipzig. After a journey through southern Germany and Switzerland, and a visit to Strasbourg, he returned to Leipzig, and set to work upon a critical study of the New Testament text. In 1840 he qualified as university lecturer in theology with a dissertation on the recensions of the New Testament text, the main part of which reappeared the following year in the prolegomena to his first edition of the Greek New Testament. His critical apparatus included variant readings from earlier scholars, Elsevier, Georg Christian Knapp, Johann Martin Augustin Schultz, and as recent as Karl Lachmann, whereby his researches were emboldened to depart from the received text as used in churches. These early textual studies convinced him of the absolute necessity of new and more exact collations of manuscripts. From October 1840 until January 1843, he was in Paris, busy with the treasures of the Bibliothèque Nationale, eking out his scanty means by making collations for other scholars, and producing for the publisher, Fermandito, several editions of the Greek New Testament one of them exhibiting the form of the text corresponding most closely to the Vulgate. His second edition retracted the more precarious readings of the first, and included a statement of critical principles that is a landmark for evolving critical studies of biblical texts. A great triumph of these laborious months was the decipherment of the Palimpsest Codex Ephraim Siri Rescriptus, of which the New Testament part was printed before he left Paris, and the Old Testament in 1845. His success in dealing with a manuscript that, having been overwritten with other works of Ephraim Syrian, had been mostly illegible to earlier collators, made him more well-known, 
and gained support for more extended critical expeditions. He now became Professor Extraordinarius at Leipzig, and where he was married in 1845. He also began to publish Risa in Den Orient, an account of his travels in the East, in two volumes, 1845 46, translated as Travels in the East in 1847. Even though he was an expert in reading the text of a palimpsest this is a document where the original writing has been removed and new writing added, he was not able to identify the value or meaning of the Archimedes palimpsest, which he donated to Cambridge. From Paris, he had paid short visits to the Netherlands, 1841, and England, 1842. In 1843 he visited Italy, and after a stay of 13 months, went on to Egypt, Sinai, and the Levant, returning via Vienna and Munich. In 1844 Tischendorf traveled the first time to St. Catherine's Monastery at the foot of Mount Sinai in Egypt, where he found the oldest complete known Bible. Out of the many pages which were contained in an old wicker basket, the kind that the monastery hauled in its visitors as customary in unsafe territories, he was given 43 pages as a present. He donated those 43 pages to King Frederick Augustus II of Saxony, reign 1836-1854 to honor him and to recognize his patronage as the funder of Tischendorf's journey. Tischendorf held the position as theological professor at Leipzig University, also under the patronage of Frederick Augustus II. Leipzig University put two of the leaves on display in 2011. Tischendorf reported in his 1865 book One Word and Unser Evangelin for Fast, translated to English in 1866 as When Were Our Gospels Written and this section the discovery of the Sinaitic manuscript that he found, in a trash basket. 43 sheets of parchment of an ancient copy of the Greek Old Testament, reporting that the monks were using the trash to start fires. And Tischendorf, horrified, asked if he could have them. He deposited them at the University of Leipzig, under the title of the Codex Friderico Augustinus, a name given in honor of his patron, Frederick Augustus II of Saxony, King of Saxony. The fragments were published in 1846, although Tischendorf kept the place of discovery a secret. Many have expressed skepticism at the historical accuracy of this report of saving a 1,500-year-old parchment from the flames. J. Randall Harris referred to the story as a myth. The Tischendorf Liesbuch, see references, quotes that the librarian Kirillos mentioned to Tischendorf that contents of the basket had already twice been submitted to the fire. The contents of the baskets were damaged scriptures, the third filling apparently, so cited by Tischendorf himself. See Tischendorf Liesbuch. Tischendorf's own account. In 1853 Tischendorf made a second trip to the Syrian monastery but made no new discoveries. He returned the third time in January 1859 under the patronage of Tsar Alexander II of Russia with the activate of the Russian government to find more of the Codex Frederico Augustinus or similar ancient biblical texts. On February 4, the last day of his visit, he was shown a text which he recognized as significant, the Codex Sinaiticus a Greek manuscript of the complete New Testament and parts of the Old Testament dating to the 4th century. Tischendorf persuaded the monks to present the manuscript to Tsar Alexander II of Russia, at the cost of the Tsar it was published in 1862, in four folio volumes. Those ignorant of the details of his discovery of the Codex Sinaiticus accused Tischendorf of buying manuscripts from ignorant monastery librarians at low prices. Indeed, he was never rich but he staunchly defended the rights of the monks at St. Catherine's Monastery when he persuaded them eventually to send the manuscript to the Tsar. This took approximately ten years because the abbot of St. Catherine's had to be re-elected and confirmed in office in Cairo and in Jerusalem, and during those ten years no one in the monastery had the authority to hand over any documents. However the documents were handed over in due course following a signed and sealed letter to the Tsar Alexander II, Shinkung Zirkunde. Even so, the monks of Mount Dot Sinai still display a receipt letter from Tischendorf promising to return the manuscript to them in the case that the donation cannot be done. This token letter had to be destroyed, following the late issue of Ishinkung Zirkunde. This donation act regulated the codex exchange with the Tsar, against 9,000 rubles in Romanian estate protection. The Tsar was seen as the protector of Greek Orthodox Christians. Thought lost since the Russian Revolution, the document, Shinkung Zirkunde has now resurfaced in St. Petersburg 2003, and has also been long before commented upon by other scholars like Kurt Oland. The monastery has disputed the existence of the gift certificate, Shinpung Zirkunde, since the British Library was named as the new owner of the Codex.
Now following the late find of the gift certificate by the National Russian Library the existence cannot be disputed in earnest. In 1869 the Tsar awarded Tishendorf the style of von Tishendorf as a Russian noble. 327 facsimile editions of the Codex were printed in Leipzig for the Tsar, instead of a salary for the three-year work of Tischendorf the Tsar gave him 100 copies for reselling, in order to celebrate the 1000th anniversary of the traditional foundation of the Rus state in 862 with the publication of this most amazing find. Supporting the production of the facsimile, all made with special print characters for each of the four scribes of the Codex Sinaiticus, was shift work and contributed to Tischendorf's early demise due to exhausting work for months also during nights. Thus the Codex found its way to the Imperial Library at St. Petersburg. When the four-volume luxury edition of the Sinai Bible was completed in 1862, C. Tischendorf presented the original ancient manuscript to Emperor Alexander II. Meanwhile, the question of transferring the manuscript to the full possession of the Russian sovereign remained unresolved for some years. In 1869, the new Archbishop of Sinai, Calistratus, and the monastic community signed the official certificate presenting the manuscript to the Tsar. The Russian government, in turn, bestowed the monastery with 9,000 rubles and decorated the Archbishop and some of the brethren with orders. In 1933, the Soviet government sold the Codex Sinaiticus for £100,000 to the British Museum in London, England. The official certificate with signatures in Russian slash French slash Greek sections has been refound in St. Petersburg. In the winter of 1849, the first edition of his great work, now titled Novum Testamentum Grace, Ad antiquas testes recensut. Apparatum criticum multis modus appeared, translated as Greek New Testament. The ancient witnesses reviewed. Preparations critical in many ways, containing canons of criticism, adding examples of their application that are applicable to students today. Basic rule The text is only to be sought from ancient evidence, and especially from Greek manuscripts, but without neglecting the testimonies of versions and fathers. These were partly the result of the tireless travels he had begun in 1839 in search of unread manuscripts of the New Testament, to clear up in this way, he wrote, the history of the sacred text, and to recover if possible the genuine apostolic text which is the foundation of our faith. In 1850 appeared his edition of the Codex Amiatinus, in 1854 corrected, and of the Septuagint version of the Old Testament, 7th ed., 1887, in 1852 amongst other works, his edition of the Codex Clarimontanus. Meanwhile, also in 1859, he had been made Professor Ordinarius of Theology and of Biblical Paleography, this latter professorship being specially created for him, and another book of travel, Austem Heile in Land, appeared in 1862. Tischendorf's eastern journeys were rich enough in other discoveries to merit the highest praise. Besides his fame as a scholar, he was a friend of both Robert Schumann, with whom he corresponded, and Felix Mendelssohn, who dedicated a song to him. His text critical colleague Samuel Predotrigellis wrote warmly of their mutual interest in textual scholarship. His personal library, purchased after his death, eventually came to the University of Glasgow, where a commemorative exhibition of books from his library was held in 1974 and can be accessed by the public. He died in Leipzig. His magnum opus was the critical edition of the New Testament. The Great Edition, of which the text and apparatus appeared in 1869 and 1872, was called by himself Edidio 8, but this number is raised to 20 or 21, if mere reprints from stereotype plates and the minor editions of his great critical texts are included, posthumous prints bring the total to 41.4 .4 main recensions of Tischendorf's text may be distinguished, dating respectively from his editions of 1841, 1849, 1859, Ed. 7 and 1869-72 ed. 8. The edition of 1849 may be regarded as historically the most important, from the mass of new critical material it used, that of 1859 is distinguished from Tischendorf's other editions by coming nearer to the received text, in the 8th edition, the testimony of the Sinaitic manuscript received great, probably too great, weight. The readings of the Vatican manuscript were given with more exactness and certainty than had been possible in the earlier editions, and the editor had also the advantage of using the published labors of his colleague and friend Samuel Predotrigellis. Of relatively lesser importance was Tischendorf's work on the Greek Old Testament. His edition of the Roman text, with the variants of the Alexandrian manuscript, the Codex Ephraimi, and the Friderico Augustinus, was of service when it appeared in 1850 
but, being stereotyped, was not greatly improved in subsequent issues. Its imperfections, even within the limited field it covers, may be judged by the aid of Eberhard Nestle's appendix to the sixth issue, 1880. Besides this may be mentioned editions of the New Testament Apocrypha, De Evangelii Orum Apocryphorum or Eugene Netuzu, 1851, Acta Apostolorum Apocrypha, 1851, Evangelia Apocrypha, 1853, Second Ed, 1876, Apocalypses Apocrypha, 1866, and various minor writings, partly of an apologetic character, such as one word in Unsera Evangelii in Verfast? When were our Gospels written? 1865, 4th ed., 1866, digitized by Google and available for e-readers, Haben wir den Echten Schrift Text der Evangelisten und Apostel? 1873, and Synopsis Evangelica, 7th ed., 1898. His publications continued. Cooperation Second Author Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.